Hi, I'm Greg Tran with Gregor Group Real Estate. I'm joined again today by Asha Thune Clark of Haven Space Staging. Uh, and here in part two, we're going to talk about a couple of practical tips that can help you uh, fix up your home, get it looking better for photos, for showings, and and you know even if you're not looking to sell your house, it can maybe it can open up some space for you and and give some tips. Asha, well, what can you tell us today? Sure. So there are a couple of things that I always start off with when we're looking to stage a property. And a lot of this really does apply to how you're living in a property too. Our primary focus in staging is to create intention and then balance in every single room we go to. So when you're standing in your room, I want you to find a primary focal point and then focus on balancing around that primary focal point. So if the fireplace is the focal point of the room, then what's balancing it on either side? A lot of times what I'll do is end up telling people, remove anything that's kind of contaminating that view of um, the primary focal point. Um, Another thing, balance, does that mean like you're trying to, to put like symmetry around it or what? Absolutely, yeah, we want to create sy symmetry whenever we can. So a perfect example is a master bedroom. Mm -hmm. The typical focal point in a master bedroom is a bed. We want matching nightstands. They don't always have to be matching, but then we kind of get into the decorating side of things. So matching um, nightstands that fill the same visual space on either side with some nice big lamps that are all in proportion with the bed so that people go into a room and they feel a sense of everything's in balance in this room. It's exactly what I should have and I don't have any questions. Anytime a buyer walks into a house or even in your own home, you may notice if you walk in and something's a little off, it just doesn't feel quite right. Anytime something's not quite right, we're not getting full price offers. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. What's next? Okay, so next, I always talk to people about neutralizing and updating. A lot of people really like color and color is awesome for dwelling. For selling, we like to neutralize. And the reason we like to neutralize is, well, you may have buyers out there who absolutely love a burgundy dining room. Overall, we want to appeal to the broadest possible base of people looking at your home. A lot of times colors have even some um, cultural implications uh -huh. that we really want to be aware of. And so I know I gave you a list of some colors that you can share with your viewers to help update. Front door is a really important color. Our walls are a really important color. And then another question I always get is, how do you pick a white? And you would not believe how many hundreds of whites there are. So I have some of those um, that we'll send afterwards for you. Well, then let me, let me put you on the spot. What would, what would you say is the top white and the top gray colors that, that, that you would recommend right now? Okay, so... We see trends in home design just like we see trends in fashion. And for a yeah. long time, it's been gray, 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 gray. Yeah. And now we're seeing shifts a little bit away from true grays or even grays that feel a little bit blue into a little bit more of that, that soft gray, grayish. Um, something I tell people is gray will always be classic. Beige yeah. will always be classic. But it depends on how you do them and how you style them. I would say my number one go-to is edge comb gray. I love it because even though gray is in the name, it's not a strong gray, but it's a sophisticated, classy color that looks good in any styles. So you can have a really trendy, mid-century modern. You could have a very traditional um, estate. You could have all kinds of different architectural styles, and Edgecomb Gray looks fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. And, and just one quick question. You, you did say grayish. Is that what you said earlier? I said grayish, yeah. So a combo of gray and beige Perfect. is our grayish. Okay, cool. So, so we yeah. got colors down. What, what's next? Um, okay, so moving on from colors. Um, one thing that I talk to every single seller I work with about is proportion. A lot of times I'll walk into a house and, and we'll have little four by six picture frames on big walls. Mm. And what that does is that diminishes the feel of the entire space. Yeah. And so what I always tell people is look at proportion. If you have a console table in a hallway or in a dining room, you really want art above any piece of table, furniture, et cetera, to be about 75% of the thing it's above. So if you have a table, you want that art to take up about 75% of the width of that table. Um, the same with fireplaces. A lot of times people go, I don't know how to decorate my mantle. I don't know how to get that feel right. And yeah. really what you want to focus on is filling up about 75% of that space. And then it will feel like it's in proportion. Um, what if we don't have pieces that large? Sometimes yeah. we have really big walls. How do you fill it? Well, don't think about filling it um, with one single piece. Think about grouping it. So if you have a desk in a, in a workroom, instead of um, putting diplomas all over every wall, 
group them in kind of a cool shape so that you can get that um, visual impact that will also look really good in photos without having to go out and buy gigantic pieces of art. You know, that, that makes sense because we, we see nowadays a lot of homes are built with such high ceilings. You know, you, you can be in an office space and it has nine or 10 foot ceilings and you have this giant wall behind the desk and then you just don't know what to do with it a lot of times. Exactly. Yep. And I always tell people too, because big walls is one of our big questions is, well, I have this two story room. How do I decorate all the way up? Well, that can go one of two ways. And of course, selling is different than dwelling, but this rule I've, I've used for both, uh -huh. you can either find things that aren't just art. So we forget sometimes that art isn't just framed uh, pictures, yeah. it can be something structural or sculptural that you put free form going up a two story um, wall. Yeah. Or we don't have to decorate the entire wall. We focus on about half and then you decorate that to, to 75%. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. I've never even thought about that one. What else? Okay. So another thing that we talk about a lot is um, the rug placement under a sofa. Okay. So. I get this question a lot. Should yeah. your rug float? What are the rules? One of my answers to what are the rules? Our rules are really what works and looks good. So I don't always follow every rule that you'll look up on how big should my rug be? Can it never be in front of the couch, etc. But for the most part, you want the front of your sofa, all of the legs in the front to be sitting squarely on the rug with the rug still have some overhang beyond it. Um, that will make sure that your entire living room feels like it's in proportion. Got it. Okay. okay? Wow, you um, gave us some really good stuff. Um, is, is, is there anything we missed? Any, any other must-dos that, that you got to tell us about? So here's my, here's my favorite. Yeah. When in doubt, hide it with a basket. Huh. So we can find, luckily, it's very in. The texture, the look, kind of that boho feel is very in right now. Yeah. So we're able to find amazing baskets at Home Goods and Target and at home and all of those different places. If you've got kids, people say, well, what am I supposed to do with the toys? Buy three of them so that you have a nice set that you can line up on a wall. Then it looks decorative. It takes up some visual space and it gives you some visual artistic impact. And yeah. you can hide a ton of evils in there or um, the pantry. Have you ever opened a, a pantry that a seller had and you went, oh my God, I don't want anybody to see that. It just looks like a mess. Well, if you buy nice lined baskets, put them in there, throw all the boxes and all of the random groceries in there and suddenly it looks like a really highly desirable, nice, tidy area. True, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. I, I, I know all of our people are really gonna love seeing these, these tips because really it's just gonna help them in real life anyways, right? Yep. It All does. Right. Well, well, stay safe out there. Thanks for joining us, Sasha. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Greg.